I want to tell you about a book. It's called Words to Live By, by William Whitehead. Oh yes, I hear you. Who the hell is William Whitehead? Well, I suppose you may know who Timothy Findlay was. Timothy Irving Frederick Findlay, T-I-F-F, -F, TIFF. Not the Toronto International Film Festival. My TIFF. Great guy. Great writer. If you ever attended one of his public appearances, you know, a reading, a book signing, a talk, you may have noticed somebody else hovering nearby, somebody tall, more or less overweight, someone wearing a big smile and a pen around his neck. That was William Whitehead. That was me. Believe it or not, in our 40 years together, I missed only one of Tiff's public appearances. On the day he was on the University of Toronto campus, giving an anti-censorship talk to a convention of librarians, I was locked away in the sound booth of a nearby recording studio, recording the narration, one of the 100, 200 I had written for documentaries over the years. You know, nature of things, that kind of thing. And when he was through, Tiff walked down to join me, and he told me how amazed and somewhat appalled he was to have discovered that those particular librarians were in favor of censorship. Well, I think they'd have had a field day with this book. What this book is, is a collection of examples of the dangers of using language. All the traps that lie in wait when you think you're expressing one thing, and it turns out that for one reason or another, you actually express something absolutely different, often quite shocking, sometimes very funny. Let me give you an example. For most of our time together, Tiff and I lived near a small Ontario village called Cannington. And Cannington had a little weekly newspaper, The Gleaner, uh, a newspaper with a way of its own with the language. There was a time when there was a big kerfuffle in the community. The parents wanted sex education on the high school curriculum. The school board said, absolutely not. Our teachers may not discuss sex in the classroom. Well, this went on for about a year. And finally, the parents won. Hurrah! Teachers could talk about sex. How did the Gleaner report this? With a nice little article headed with the line, local school to offer oral sex education, which made the new policy sound just a bit more progressive than it actually was. There are so many ways you can fall into trouble using words, particularly if you try to use the words of another language other than your own. My favorite example of this is the probably apocryphal story of the three immigrant construction workers discussing the fact that their foreman's wife is unable to produce a child. And the first one says, oh yes, poor lady, uh, she is impregnable. And the second one says, no, 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 she is inconceivable. And the third one says, what you talk, she is unbearable. You see what I mean? My own adventures with another language were dealt mostly with French. In the latter years of our time together, Tiff and I bought a little writing retreat in the south of France, a property that cascaded down a valley side in a series of terraces, with the road on the top terrace, the house halfway down. The driveway leading down to the house level was both tightly curved and steeply banked. And so if we had to get a vehicle down to the house level, it was always best to have it come down backwards so it could negotiate the difficult rise forwards. Well, we were having some cartons of books delivered from our home library in Canada, and I had a call from the driver that he was nearby, so I was looking out for him, but I had to take a bathroom break, and when I got back, there he was coming down frontwards. So I went running up the driveway saying, no, 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 monsieur. I had just learned on 
from a rather mischievous local friend. The answer to my question, what's the worst thing you can say to somebody in French? He told me, and the verb he used was very similar to the verb meaning to proceed backwards, recule. So as I was running up, I got confused. I used the wrong verb. I was not telling the driver to proceed backwards. I was exhorting him to submit to anal sex. I'm happy to say, with a lot of laughter, we got it all sorted out and we got the books delivered. But that's the kind of, I guess, censorable material you'll find in my book. If you want more, I invite you to enter the book. And I hope you have a great time between the covers. Words to Live By, by William Whitehead. Published fall of 2012 by Cormorant Books in Toronto. Enjoy. <laughs>